Everybody, Dornell Dana here coming at you with another live podcast for the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And uh, today we're going to talk about something that I think every mortgage professional needs to be cognizant of because it's something that almost every single mortgage professional falls prey to. And that's leaving money on the table, friends. Real hard earned money being left on the table every single day, every single week, every single year. And it's something that is unnecessary once you understand how to plug up these holes in your marketing bucket, start to hem them up and start to put systems in place to avoid losing that money, letting it drift through your fingers, take it off the table, put it in your pocket where it belongs. Now, believe it or not, this is the second time. Yes, I repeat the second time that I've done this recording because the last time a week ago, I did the most marvelous, magnificent 20, uh, 20 minute, actually it was a 26 minute monologue. And I came out of that feeling pumped, feeling amped. And then someone hit me up on a live uh, comment and said, I think you might have your audio muted because we can't hear you. So I had a whole 26 minutes without it being recorded. So that was rather anticlimactic to say the least, but we're going to bring it to you even raw, even more raw, real, and authentic today with even more goodness than last week. So I got my microphone working. I can see it's it's on, and uh, I'm going to make sure I bring it to you full force today. So one of the things that got me thinking about having this training on where you're leaving money on the table is I went to beautiful Mexico, Extapa, Zihuatanejo, Troncones, Mexico, for three weeks Last Christmas, uh, the parents-in-law dangled the carrot of a two-week stay at a beautiful vacation rental in Troncones, beautiful surf break. And I was like, man, we got to do this. Screw it. Let's do it. Two weeks with the outlaws. Ooh, not so sure about that, but surf, sun, hang with the family, infinity pool. What the hell? Why not? And so we ended up going there. And uh, to make a long story short, things didn't exactly pan out as uh, expected because what we were sold wasn't delivered and there was a whole big rigmarole about the property being tied up in a divorce, a messy divorce. And we were supposed to get transport because we were kind of in a remote spot away from the main town, but unfortunately we didn't have any. So we pulled some strings and managed to get some transport. But what we got was an authentic Mexican experience. We got what I call the Mexi taxi because the property manager, who was managing the property had a brother who had this piece of crap beat up Tahoe and he brought it over. The emergency brake didn't work. The fuel gauge didn't work. It was beat up and tattered inside and out. The thing was a mess. It was a, an authentic Mexican experience. And we ended up driving this thing to get to the next town over where they have this killer left break. Those of you who are surfers, you know what I'm talking about. There was just this phenomenal left break in a, town just about 15, 20 minutes over. So we go over there and on our way, we realized, my word, what is up with this vehicle? I put the fuel uh, pedal down and it doesn't go anywhere. And yet it's building smoke. It's stinky as heck. The fuel gauge doesn't work. Uh, so we don't know what's going on with fuel. Thought I was going to have enough fuel. Didn't have enough fuel. On the way back, we ran out of fuel. It was a fiasco, but we had a ton of fun. We managed to get home. It was all cool. So what's my point? My point is there was something wrong with this vehicle where you put down the pedal of the gas on that vehicle and you would not get any power. All you're doing is burning fuel. It burned fuel super rich, super hot, and we didn't have any power. And so it got me thinking. A lot of mortgage professionals operate the same way. They're putting a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort, and yet they're not getting much traction. They're not getting much power. There's a whole stink of busyness and activity, but they're not getting full optimization out of that energy they're putting in. And they often end up spinning their wheels and getting nowhere fast. And they wonder why it's because they're losing power somewhere along the way. So where are you losing power in your business is the question. That's what we're going to be talking about. Reminds me of a conversation I had with one of my clients recently where uh, he had like, you know, 17 years of experience in the game. He had a big old database. He'd been doing great numbers, you know, 
he'd been doing over 300 transactions a year. So big numbers, but he's working like 60, 70 hours a week. He's hustling hard and he's bringing in like 1900 leads in a year and he's only closing 300 of them. So he's got like a 12% conversion rate on his lead to closings, which believe it or not, if you don't know what typical ratios are, that's pretty low. That's about half what it should be. Should be about a quarter. So about 25%. He was half that. So 12%. On top of that, he was doing nothing with his database. He didn't have a CRM. He was doing what I call Cro-Magnon marketing with Outlook and an Excel spreadsheet. So was doing virtually zero database marketing and he had over 800 past clients. So he was leaving a ton of money on the table in his database. Uh, he was busting this hump. He was definitely doing it the hard way, putting in tons of time, but not getting much out of the assets he had. He was going after any, but anybody with a pulse who could fog a mirror who called himself a real estate agent, he would do business with. Very little of his referral partners were top producers. He was herding a lot of cats with, he was working with like 40 different real estate agents. You can imagine that. I mean, that's 40 cats he got to herd on an ongoing basis and 40 different personalities, 40 different bosses trying to boss you around and tell you what to do and trying to get you to get pre-approvals for this person and that person. So this guy was just going crazy, working his tail off and he was wondering why he was burnt out. And so notice similar idea to that Mexi taxi that we were rocking, right? Where you're putting all this juice in, you're getting no juice out, burning up all this fuel, but going nowhere. This guy was, in the upper echelon of, of producers in the industry. And yet he was not fulfilled because he was working so much and he didn't have systems in place that liberated him. He had built a business that literally enslaves him as opposed to sets him free. So while his company's happy because he's doing big volume, he's not happy because he's not able to take time away and be able to have his team run like a finely old machine in his absence and be able to get the best quality leads like repeat and referral. He was dealing with a lot of leads that weren't converting. So he was sifting through a lot of gravel to find very few golden nuggets while his cumulative totals were high. And most people would say, dang, man, I'd love to be doing over 300 transactions a year. He knew that he was leaving a ton of lost power, opportunity and traction on the table because he didn't have a lot of these systems in place. So he's a prime example of where we leave opportunity on the table and where you're leaving money on the table. So I wanted to kind of tie this in for you guys and bring you back to the basics. You know, how do you become a black belt in martial arts? You don't become a black belt by doing 20 different moves five times. You become a black belt by just doing five moves. 20,000 times, right? So it's the repetition of the fundamentals that really move you towards mastery. So we're gonna move to three different areas of mastery in our conversation here, that when you master these three areas and you learn how to hem up the holes in your proverbial marketing bucket in those three areas, it will make a profound difference in your ability to earn more while working the same or less. So the first area that a lot of mortgage professionals leave money on the table is in their database. We've talked about this before, but it's something that I think is so often overlooked, it's worth talking about again. So there's different factors here. One of them is lead to app. So usually, especially if you're doing uh, direct to consumer marketing, where money's being left on the table, if you're doing Facebook ads, for example, or any kind of, um, advertising where you're generating consumer direct leads as opposed to referrals from friends or family members or clients or realtors is the speed to lead factor is mission critical. In other words, if you don't follow up with that lead like now and you let it get cold for a day or two, chances are you're never going to convert that lead because the longer you leave it, the less likely it's going to convert because they get distracted, they go into other things, they get poached by a competitor. You get the idea, you've got to have speed to lead on following up with those leads. So that's one area you may be leaving money on the table is not having an automated system to follow up with those leads. 
Another area is app to closing, where you get the app, but then you drop them like a hot potato and you're not consistently following up with them by email, by direct mail, by phone, to cultivate those people, to stay in touch with those people, to add value to those people so that they convert into a closing eventually when they get an accepted offer, if it's a purchase app, for example. So that's where we leave more money on the table because we don't have a long-term nurture campaign for after you take the application. The other area where you can be losing steam and losing power is post-closing. So you may do great before closing and staying in touch with them, but then once you close them, that may be the area where you're dropping them like a hot potato. And all of a sudden now they're collecting dust and they don't hear you hear from you very long. Or if they do hear from you, you're just calling them without a real compelling reason to talk to them, right? So you call them, just say, hey, how's it going? just kind of shooting the poop and hoping that just by reaching out to them, you're going to get some business. That's where you're going to leave a lot of money on the table. If you don't have a strategic method to reach out to these people, some people literally just call their clients once a year based on their last name. So just going through it like the yellow page or the, or the white pages, right? Like totally no strategic reason why you're talking to them other than you're going to talk to them once a year and there's no real value. There's no meaningful conversation other than how are things going, right? Do you have anyone who could, benefit from my service. So that's another way you could leave money on the table by not having a meaningful and compelling strategy and reason for why you're talking to these people. And another reason or way you can be leaving money on the table is not using multimedia. So you might just be using email. You're not using direct mail. You're not using telephone. You're not using text message. You're not using social media. And because of that, you're leaving a lot of money on the table because you're only hitting them using a very uh, myomic, myopic and anemic media set with one media method. So every additional media method you use is going to allow you to take that money off the table and put it in your pocket. Because some people may respond to text, but not email. Some people may respond to email, uh, but not direct mail. Some people may respond to email, but they will respond to direct mail. Some people may not respond to anything, but they will respond to a live phone call. So by using all those media, you're able to connect with the greatest amount of people and build that meaningful conversation and connection so they don't get poached by your competitors. So when they think mortgage, boom, you're the only logical choice. Does that make sense, guys? So that's another way where you can be leaving money on the table. So if you notice that you're leaving money on the table and you're watching this or listening to this live, I invite you to uh, take the one idea you've heard so far where you think you may be leaving money on the table. Maybe it's that you're not using direct mail, or maybe it's that you're not using text message, or maybe it's that you're not using social media, or maybe it's that you're not using the telephone, or maybe it's you're not using any of them. But take note of where the opportunity is for you and what you've heard so far, where you're leaving money on the table. Love to hear from you and get some engagement in that respect. Uh, the next area where you may be leaving money on the table um, inside of database marketing, uh, which is the first area, is you may be lacking what are called trigger campaigns. Trigger campaigns are where uh, you're able to send the right message at the right time at the, to the right people. Uh, and we have a lot of different trigger campaigns inside of our database marketing acceleration formula program or our client acceleration formula program, where, for example, you send a client uh, a gift basket to the client's workplace with a big plume of helium balloons. So they're literally forced to rave about you to their colleagues all day long, right? It literally causes a commotion in the workplace. Uh, we provide our clients with a vendor that automates that whole process and it even includes a note from you and the real estate agent. Do you think your realtor might appreciate that? Absolutely, right? So that's just one example of a trigger campaign. Notice it's the right message. It's the right thing at the right time for the right people with maximum impact. There's all sorts of different trigger campaigns like that from birthday call campaigns to um annual mortgage reviews, etc. So we have a full quiver of those kind of kick-ass turnkey plug and play campaigns. And if you're not using those types of campaigns or you're using them, but you're not doing it the right way with just the right secret sauce and the right proportions and the right sequences, chances are you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Just like if you have a recipe for souffle with a little bit of this, a little bit of that, heat the uh, oven up at just this temperature, put the dry, stuff in first, mix it up, then put the wet stuff in second. If you mess up any of the sequence, any of the syntax, any of the proportions, 
you're going to mess up the end result. Same thing here. You got to have just the right recipe, just the right formula, or you're going to botch the souffle, right? But if you have a master chef who gives you the master chef recipe, now you can thread the needle and be creating a beautiful, delicious, succulent souffle from your first time around because you got the plug and play recipe. You guys with me on that? We all know this to be true in real life with recipes to cook food. We got to start to apply that principle in our businesses and our results will magnify and electrify almost overnight. So that's the first area, guys, where we're leaving money on the table is just in our own database of prospects and clients. And then the second area is real estate agents. So we all know that there's lots of different partners, lots of different uh, potential partners. We can go after uh, CPAs, financial planners. Uh, we can go after insurance agents. We can go after title companies, etc. But the single most profound, most powerful, most uh, profit producing referral partner category is not just real estate agents, but who? Top producing real estate agents. The ones who have the lion's share of the inventory, they got the most clout, they've got the most influence, they've got the most buyers who need a mortgage. Can you think of any other source that has more power than that? There is no other source. There's no more higher leverage referral source than a top producing real estate agent. If they're doing 50 to 100 plus transact transactions a year, think about how many potential deals that is to you, especially if those are all on the buyer side. Massive, right? So one of the areas where a lot of mortgage professionals are leaving money on the table when it comes to their real estate agents is number one, they'll take anyone with a pulse who can fog a mirror who calls himself a real estate agent. They're not selective or strategic about who they work with. They think that Top producers are harder to attract, so they go after the bottom feeders or the newbies who, even if they were to say, okay, I'm all in, let's do business, they got no business to send you. So, you know, who really gives a rip if they're gonna align with you, if they can't send you business? And that's what a lot of mortgage pros are doing, is they're going after the bottom feeders and the low producers, and then they wonder why they're not getting much business. And then they start to think erroneous beliefs like, okay, in order for me to get where I wanna be, in my business, I need to have 20 or 25 or 30 or 40 or 50 real estate agents. And so they think about these colossal number of realtors that, the, that they need just to get to a rather nominal income level. That's doing it the hard way, friends. That's leaving money on the table. Why not cut all that clutter, cut all that crap and go straight to just a few top producers? What if you could have three, six, nine, 12, top producing VIP realtor partners who do 50 transactions plus per year, who send you all their business all the time, make you their exclusive, put you on their speed dial. Think about the ramifications, think about the impact of just having a few top dogs who go all in and send you all their business and are sending you one, two, three deals a month. So that's one of the areas is that you're not strategic about going after the people who can send you the most amount of business. And believe it or not, you know, people might, uh, you might even have the, the thought that, but Dorn, these top producers are already married to their loan officer. They're already married to their lender. I've tried that before, it didn't work. I'd rather go after the newbies because they're easier to break in with. I get that, but that's a symptom of doing it the hard way because you have a unique, your, your, your value proposition is weak, if not non-existent. If you're just offering great rates, great service, that is not a unique value proposition, friends. That is not unique, it's not compelling. You gotta show up with something compelling beyond just great rates, great service, because that's a minimum expectation. So if you don't have a kick-ass value proposition, you're leaving money on the table because you'll reach out to 20 real estate agents, 19 of them won't give you the time of day, and the one who does will meet with you just to you know, take your free lunch and leave and give you nothing. So you just end up making friends instead of actual real partnerships. Is this sounding familiar? Some of you can relate to this intimately, right? You know what I'm talking about. from intimate real life experience. So we gotta be strategic about who we're targeting. If you're targeting the low producers, you leave the money on the table. We gotta be strategic about what we're offering, what bait we're offering. If you have weak bait or non-existent bait, you leave the money on the table because you're spending all this time reaching out to them and you're not getting the meetings or you're getting the meetings but you're not making real partnerships because you don't have a strategic exclusive VIP partnership program that stacks the awesome, that stacks the cool, 
that stacks your uniqueness, that makes you irreplaceable, indispensable, and the only logical you know, choice when it comes to a partner. Because you just kind of like, you know, you're going from let's date to let's get married all in the first meeting. You can't do that. But oftentimes mortgage, mortgage pros don't understand what to do after the first meeting. They think, okay, I took them up for a lunch, I wine them and dine them. Now they should just send me business. No, that's not how it works. You gotta strategically target the right real estate agents. Then you've got to have the right value prop. Then you've got to do the first meeting the right way that has them chomping at the bit and wanting to learn more without showing up and throwing up and giving a data dump about how great you are and why they should be doing business with you and all that. Because that's just going to repel them, not attract them. And that's what most loan officers are doing, repelling instead of attracting, leave more money on the table right there. Like I was talking to a, a client just the other day, 21 meetings. He had 21 meetings in the last three weeks. How many of them were top producers? Zero. How many of them actually partnered with him and made him their exclusive lender? Zero. 21 meetings, guys. That's doing it the hard way. That's leaving money on the table. That is unnecessary if you know how to do it right. 21 meetings using my method you've, and you're targeting top dogs, you're getting eight to 10 top producing VIP partners going all in, sending all their business all the time. Going narrow, deep, and rich with just a few top producers instead of wide and shallow and skimpy with a bunch of chumps who just have all kinds of promises but nothing that actually delivers in real life. You guys are tired of that, are you not? Are you not tired of getting promises but not getting those promises honored with real deals in your pipeline? I don't know about you, but for me, that would drive me crazy. I wanna work with top producers. I wanna work with people with the right synergy. I wanna work with people I enjoy working with. I wanna work with people that are positive and upbeat and humble and coachable and ambitious and hardworking and driven and loyal. And yet if I don't have a kick-ass value prop and if I'm not showing up bringing, being my best and bringing my best and if I'm not giving people a compelling reason to partner with me and if I'm not making it an absolute no-brainer by stacking the cool and stacking the awesome awesomeness and making it an absolutely no-brainer choice, then I'm leaving money on the table. So there's another area you may be leaving money on the table is with your real estate agents and how you're approaching them and whether or not you have a strategic way to have them go all in. Do you have a compelling, unique value proposition? Do you have a reason that makes you the only logical choice beyond great rates, great service, and you got uh, you know, the ability to close deals within you know, eight days? If that's all you have, that's zero, nada, zilch. That is zero value prop because they expect you to be doing that because they expect mortgage professionals to do their job well, period. That's just getting in the game. That's not even an, one notch on your belt. You're just getting in the game at that point. So what we do with our client acceleration formula, our realtor, uh, realtor marketing acceleration formula is we give you the strategy for how to do the first meeting. How, first of all, how to book the appointment without a single cold call. That's another area you, you could be leaving money on the table is that you are reaching out to these real estate agents completely cold and you don't really know what to say to book the appointment. So you just call in and say, hey, I see you're doing really great things. Uh, I see that you're one of the top producers in the market. Um, I, I really love to be able to work with you. I know I can do some great things for you. We have some fantastic programs, products, services. Uh, our rates are fantastic. Uh, we got phenomenal reviews. And um, I think I could definitely help you grow your business if you're open to getting together for coffee. You know, it'd be great to, uh, to get together. Are you open to meeting? Uh, no, I'm already working with my lender. I'm cool, man. I'm good. But thanks for reaching out. That's pretty much how it goes, right? Because you do not have the words that work to book the appointment. So we give you the words that work to book the appointment. It's like a hot knife through butter. It's like you were sitting in a dark room and all of a sudden, bing, someone flipped the light on. It's a new day where all of a sudden you can get appointments like that at will. The other cool thing is we have an automated system that allows you to send text messages, voicemails, and emails to top producing real estate agents. And then they respond to you and say, hey, I'm interested. They pre-congregate and pre-select themselves and say, hey, yeah, I'm interested. And then you just pick up the phone and, and it's literally like this. 
hey, I saw your text. Um, yeah, I'm open on uh, Tuesday or Thursday next week for us to get together and I show you what I've got. What's the best day for you? It's literally like that. You get them pre-sold, pre-cooked, pre-tenderized, hot for what you got before you even talk to them. Zero cold calling. There are coaching companies out there that will get you calling the same real estate agents every Monday, 40 real estate agents every militant Monday doing cold calling or calling the same ones every single week with a lame ass value prop. And then you wonder why they don't wanna meet with you. You wonder why they avoid your call. You wonder why they're not giving you the time of day because it's a lame ass value prop and they're done with it, friends. They don't wanna hear from, would you wanna hear from the same person every single freaking week without a compelling reason to meet aside from, hey, I, I got great rates and great service? I sure as hell wouldn't. I got better things to do. I got bigger fish to fry, don't you? So your, your real estate agents feel the same way. That's how they see it too. So why call the same realtors every single Monday? Why not call or text or email or voicemail one uh, real, realtor, you know, who you could load a list of 50 real estate agents who are top producers into our system and automatically, automatically sends the text messages, voicemails and emails, you'll get about 25 of them responding back to you and then you just literally pick up the phone and book appointments. It's like a hot knife through butter, friends. Why do it the hard way? There's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way. Wouldn't you agree? Why not do it the easy way? Why do it the Cro-Magnon caveman method if you don't have to? So that's where we're leaving money on the table with your realtors. And then lastly, the last area where you may be leaving money on the table is with your delegation or lack thereof. So a lot of you, you're waiting way too long to delegate, especially administrative tasks tied to your marketing. So for example, you're the chief cook and bottle washer, you're wearing all the hats, you're doing all the admin tied to your marketing, plus you're doing the paperwork, you're taking apps, you're finding a home for a loan, you're doing processing, you're doing the whole kit and caboodle, you wonder why you're frizzled and fried and you got no energy at the end of the day and you keep telling yourself, man, if I just had more time in the day, then I could, get my business going, then I could take my business to the next level. Sound familiar? If there was only just a few more hours in the day. No, that's bullshit. Everybody has the same amount of time per day. Everyone's got the same 24 hours. The difference between the guy doing 50 Gs a year and the guy doing 500 Gs a year is how productive they are and how productive they are is inextricably linked with how effective they are at focusing on the high producing activities and delegating all the rest. You wanna do what you do best, you wanna get the best to do all the rest, and that means you need to be focusing on rainmaking, not paper pushing. But far too often we fall into this habit of saying, well, I need to be making more money before I delegate. That costs money, Dorn, it does. But did you know you can get a virtual assistant for five bucks an hour to the Philippines to be doing this stuff for you, and you can do it part-time, spare time, and between time before you wrap it up to full-time? Well, I never thought about that, Dorn. Well, yeah, exactly. That's where you wanna start. You wanna to start to delegate, especially the administrative stuff tied to your marketing. So you can get more marketing out the door, you can get more leads in the door, and you can get more cash in your wallet. It starts with the administrative task tied to your marketing, and then you ramp up from there to maybe getting an LOA to help in your operations, a loan officer assistant. You can get someone to help take apps for you. You can get people processing and underwriting for you. But we gotta offload all that minutia. Otherwise, you're leaving money on the table because if you want to make 100K per year, your time needs to be worth 50 bucks an hour. And if you are doing that stuff that you could delegate for five bucks an hour, we got a problem, my friend. We got a problem because you're doing the thing that you could delegate for five bucks an hour. What do you think is going to happen to your income if you keep doing that? It's going to plummet. It's going to drop like a lead bullet, my friend. And this is precisely how we become our own worst enemy. We become our own bottleneck. So those are the three areas where we leave money on the table, in our database, with our real estate agents, and with our time leverage, our time management, our ability to delegate, our ability to streamline, systematize, and uh, you know automate processes from procedures and campaigns and systems and tasks. We gotta remove you from all that heavy lifting through technology and team. And once you put those pieces of the puzzle in place and we hem up those holes in your proverbial bucket, that's when you can really start to 
take that garden hose of leads, start to pour it into your funnel, into your business, and you're capturing as much profit producing nectar out of that opportunity as possible. And that's where you get to half a million, a million plus per year by maximizing and leveraging those opportunities. But far too often, we know this stuff, but we don't do it because we don't know the pathway, right? We know to do it, but we don't know the pathway. We don't have the accountability. We don't have the systems. We don't have the tools. We don't have the templates. We're reinventing the wheel all the time. We're trying to wing it, right? Throwing yogurt to the fan, hoping something sticks. But that doesn't work very well, does it? It doesn't work very well because we end up scurrying around, chasing our tails instead of just going straight to what works, sticking the key in the ignition and driving away. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of spinning your wheels, if you're frustrated as hell with staying at the same level year after year, if you're tired of throwing yogurt to the fan, hoping something sticks, if you've come to the point where you realize your way ain't working, if you're tired of leaving money on the table that could be feeding your family and feeding your future, then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching call with either myself or one of our consultants where we'll lift up the hood on your business and we'll look at what's working, what's not working, where are you at now, where do you want to be? And if we can help you create that breakthrough, by all means, we will show you, show you how to do that. And if not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, either way, you're going to leave the call with massive value, massive clarity. We'll have fun and it'll be an incredible clarity conversation for you. Clarity like you've never had before on where you are, are in your life, where you are in your business and what you need to do and what you need to put into place to get where you want to be. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, I invite you to go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply and book a call into our calendar and we'll connect and I promise you, it'll be one of the most rewarding, most impactful, and certainly has the potential to be the most life-changing 60 minutes you've invested in your life and your business in a very, very long time, if not ever. So again, this is Doran Aldana, Mortgage Marketing Coach, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. One thing I can promise you, my friends, if you will just simply focus on identifying one, two, or three areas where you're leaving money on the table, and if you'll simply put it in your calendar to focus on one per week, or even one every second week, within a matter of 30, 60, 90 days, you'll be absolutely blown away with how far you've come. It may not happen in a day, but if you do it daily, and you plan your work, and you work your plan, you'll be absolutely marveled at how far you can come. Most people underestimate what they can do in a lifetime or in a year, but they overestimate what they can do in a week. So start to just break it down into some bite-sized pieces. Focus on just getting one little piece of the puzzle in place. And if you're lost and you're confused and you need help and you need clarity and you need direction, and you need a battle-tested proven plan, then reach out to us, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Get on a call. We'll help you get that clarity you need. And if we decide we're the right fit, we will be the catalyst for your breakthrough, my friend. I can't tell you how much it brings me joy, passion, fulfillment, thrill, when I get to be part of someone, someone's breakthrough, someone's liberation, and someone's success. So I look forward to hearing from you. Again, this is MortgageMarketingCoach.com, Doran Aldana, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Peace. Talk to you again soon.